I'm really excited about this. It's archaeology. If you've ever seen an Indiana Jones movie or are fascinated by ancient structures like the pyramids, this is going to be a great project for you. This place is amazing. It's Gobekli Tempe in Turkey. This is amazing because it is 6,000 years older than Stonehenge. 7,000 years older than the pyramids of Egypt. This is an amazing place to start. There's other things that are super cool about this too. Without giving too much away, there's just mind-blowing things about it. They have carvings on these columns there, and the carvings are of animals. And from what we knew before, we didn't think some of these animals really existed in that area. And if you look here, there is looks like it's a carving of an alligator or a crocodile, which would not have been native to Turkey. I'll keep this simple. Uh, we'll elaborate on the next slide, but we want to know what this is when it was built, who built it, where is it, why did they build it, and how did they build it. Hi, hey, we've talked about uh, Bloom's taxonomy before, and basically it's about critical thinking and improving the quality of your report. Because the basic level, the bottom level, <clears throat> is when you take information from Google and you slap it on a slide and present it as information. That's the lowest level. The second level is a little bit better. You might use multiple sources to make sure your answers are reliable and include a little bit more detail. Okay, the top level. This is when you use multiple sources. You will find multiple answers because they'll have different, some scientists and resources will have different opinions. Uh, you'll be comparing how one site connects to another. One easy comparison to make is to compare uh, Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids and Gobekli Tempe about how long old they are and how there's even debate about how old each one is, and they compare those a lot. And then you'll talk about how these sites and studying these sites has changed our understanding of history, geography, climate. And you also include what you think. Okay, let's talk about reliability or reliable, credible. Credible means believable. Sources. Your first Google search may not be the best choice. You don't want to take information from someone's personal travel blog. You don't want to take information from something necessarily that ends in .com. You don't want to take information from um, typically businesses like travel agencies. So like no travel is agent, travel agencies, places that are trying to make money off you. And try not to take any information from someone's personal blog. You could see that in YouTube's videos and you could see it on just people's personal websites. In, in addition, let's think of, talk about Wikipedia. Wikipedia can be changed and edited, so we don't know if that is always the most reliable, up-to-date information. It could be. If you can corroborate it, meaning you can compare it to another source, so you can do that. But man, you just cannot be slopping down some answer that you Googled, okay? So be looking at the end of that URL address. If it says .com, and you start reading it, and it's clearly a travel agency, or it says .com and it's somebody's personal travel log, which is basically a diary, you don't want to use that either. What you do want to use is you can use PBS, Public Broadcasting System. They do, that's Channel 9 in our area, and they do lots of documentaries, and it's very clear-cut, scientific, not hardly any politics involved in it, just a clear information. And as far as that goes, National Geographic, that would be a good source. There's tons of National Geographic sources. Those are excellent. Um, National Geographic, oh, BBC, 
the British Broadcasting Corporation. That is a really good source also. It doesn't mean you're going to find everything from them, but you're going to have to do searches from multiple sources that give you consistent information. It's really going to stand out if you're slopping down an answer on a slide that you found within two or three minutes of Googling. And if you think you're going to finish this project in an hour, you need to rethink that. Teaming up might be a good way to do this. Um, <clears throat> ideally, you'd have one of your team build a couple of different places. And uh, it's kind of like the way Jackson and Josh and Max and Aiden built um, the Aztec and Mayan pyramids. And then their friends had information on PowerPoint slides. And then the person in charge of um, um, uh, SketchUp would pop those in. Now, that would be outstanding. Um, on our video channel uh, for YouTube, it has, uh, if, you, if you search your channel, type in child labor, which is funny, uh, Jackson and Josh's um, Aztec Maya pro project pops up, and it's just exceptionally good. Uh, it took a really long time, but there was just two of them. But if you have five or six people in a group and you have 10 topics, you can really divide this up well. Um, if you have someone like <coughs> Gavin, uh, Gavin can start cranking out this stuff and drawing it, and the rest of you can make a PowerPoint slide and pop those in. So, but if you don't feel great with um, SketchUp, because it can be really time consuming, uh, you can do it in PowerPoint and you can do it in Video Scribe. Okay, and we'll try to combine those at the end. But I do think teaming up might be the best way. Okay, for you people who really like to work alone, which I can totally understand, uh, you can work alone and there'll be l lesser expectations as far as uh, technological display or product, uh, but it still should be pretty interesting. Okay, so you, PowerPoint's always the simplest thing to do. You might want to start with that. Once again, we have Video Scribe and everyone can use that from home. Okay, video scribe. You do not have to have the full version of PowerPoint. Video scribe. You can download video scribe and I will give you your username and password if you forgot it. But video scribe, I repeat, you do not need PowerPoint. Video scribe. Okay, so if you're working alone, you can do that too. And I do kind of think this should be a two week project so that it's really extra good. Okay, this is another thing, even if you're working along, and especially if you're working with groups, could you check in with your friends? There's a few people who haven't been joining us on Zoom. If we could try to get them to join us, and if it's for something, as if for reasons for technology, we've got to find a way to bring everybody in, okay? So we'll all do better and be happier if we're working together. 